tonight we have a doozy. And a doozy that became m- more of a doozy. I'm going to stop saying the word doozy. Uh, the, the, the University of North Carolina Tar Heels will be visiting the North Carolina State Wolfpack men's basketball. And with Wake Forest losing last night to Florida State, suddenly this one is for the top of the ACC. If you win the game, you take over the top spot in the ACC standings. You're the last remaining unbeaten in Atlantic Coast Conference play. And you get bragging rights in a rivalry that bragging rights matter. You get bragging rights in a rivalry that your fans will thank you for. You get bragging rights in a rivalry that I don't think I need to say anything else about. Because we all get what's up. The loser falls into a tie with Duke and Wake for second place, uh, as kind of the the you know the state of North Carolina stays right near right near the top of the ACC standings early on. First of all, I love games like this for a few reasons. Um, on the Pack Therapy podcast, which this episode is out uh, all over the place already, everywhere podcasts can be found. Um, I had the chance to speak with Kevin Keats, the head coach of NC State, and I asked him if you use games like this as like a spot check, as as a uh, test to see where you are, because tonight will feel like a postseason game. The stakes are high, right? The, the, the stakes are everything we want in a rivalry game, everything that we said, right? The standing stakes, the, the rivalry stakes, the bragging rights stakes, the stakes are high, the atmosphere will be electric, the teams are good. To me, this is where you get to see, right? Pressure makes diamonds or burst pipes. If, if, if it bursts pipes and there's water on the ground half, halfway through today, you're going to look around and go, all right, we got to get we got to get this fixed in the time of postseason play, right? It, it, you definitely want to win. You definitely want to beat the, the, the rivalry element. But a loss here is more like exposing flaws than it would be uh, any kind of fatal blow. So let's look at the game. It comes down to a few things for me. I have a list in front of me of kind of keys. One, can Ben Middlebrooks and Mo Diara defend Armando Baycott? I don't want R.J. Burns down there trying to to DJ Burns. DJ Burns. R.J. Burns is his twin brother. It's like the State Farm commercials with Cliff Paul. Uh, I actually think I went to a high school with a kid named R.J. Burns, uh, which I had not thought about until just now. Uh, DJ Burns. I don't want him guarding Armando Baycock because I think he's too valuable to the other side. And and also, when you're a guy that size, you know, the energy meter, you got you to gotta be careful with it. Uh, so Middlebrooks and Diara, can they jump in and give serious minutes defending Armando Baycott without fouling, without letting Baycott get going, uh, rebounding the, the basketball when, when Baycott's around? You know that Baycott is going to be hunting for rebounds and extra possessions. The other thing that I thought was interesting with, with um, my conversation with Kevin Keats is I brought up NC State's turnover margin, in which case they are first in the ACC in turnover margin, uh, and and meaning they turn their opponents over way more than they turn the ball over. And I believe at, at the time they were seventh in the country, and this was uh, yesterday. So the games last night may have changed that a little bit, but they're definitely top ten in the country in in turnover margin. And I asked him about it, like, hey, all these new guys, but you have the chemistry to not turn the ball over and to force turnovers. How'd that happen? And he went, oh, you know, we play clean, but but he pointed this out. He goes, but you know, we're still giving our opponent extra possessions by not finishing out possessions with defensive rebounding. Right? That's You get an extra possession by forcing a turnover. You get an extra possession by not turning it over, but if you're giving your t- your your opponent extra possessions by not defensively rebounding the basketball, that kind of gives back a lot of that hard work. So so I'm looking at Middlebrooks, Diara, Burns. Uh, I'm looking at anybody that mixes it up down low and saying the rebounding will be important because you know Baycott is is not a stranger to a couple trash buckets. Right, grab that offensive board, go back up with it. You, you know he'll do that. And Ingram as and, well. And, and Ingram. I mean, a few. A few. Another one. Do Cam Woods and MJ Rice get the chance to give NC, step, NC State a depth? Not NC Stepth. NC State a depth advantage. Because I look at these these two uh, 
rosters, they kind of both have like seven, eight guys that are averaging 10 plus minutes. Obviously, the starters more, but they have seven, eight guys in their rotation they're really, really comfortable with. But if you add MJ Rice and Cam Woods, two guys that have become eligible and or become available after injury, uh, you know, as the season went along, then NC State has a two man advantage and they can do things like press. They can do things like run. They can do things like try to tire out UNC. The problem is, you know, they're being asked to integrate themselves into a team while ACC play is going on. And I'm not sure coaches are like, hey, you know what? Let's knock uh, the rest of that rust off with North Carolina in town in a very important ACC game. It's, it's, I'm not sure they're going to get the chance to do that. So that's one thing to look at. From the Carolina side, uh, does RJ Davis catch a hot streak? RJ Davis is one of the streakiest shooters I've seen, meaning when he watches like two go in, if he hits two threes early in the game, there's a collective uh-oh from the other sideline because you know he's going to keep firing and you know there's a good chance they're going to keep going in. He had been on a hot streak for a while. The last couple of games, he's cooled off a little bit. He's not playing bad by any stretch, but he's cooled off a little bit. If he heats it back up, that's going to be tough because then you know that NC State perimeter is going to have to really lock down uh, their communication and knowing where he is over and under every screen. And then there's our guy. Uh, you know, you always look for, I don't know what you call them, X factors, right? You look for uh, the pieces that are hard to to predict. I'm just a big fan of Harrison Ingram. And and part of the reason why, you know, in maybe the worst like uh, and one street baller nickname of all time, I want to call him Potpourri. Potpourri? Potpourri. Okay. Because you never know what you're going to get, right? It, 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 it's It's – a wide array. It's it's varied. Some games he's going to show up and he's his contribution is going to be shooting the three. Some games he's going to show up and his contribution is going to be guarding one through four pretty consistently and switching. Sometimes he's going to show up and it's rebounding. Sometimes it's effort. Sometimes it's leadership. And the kind that you can like see, right? Uh, Grabbing the basketball, and one of my favorite things is the palm to the floor, not like slapping the floor, but just like the calm down motion, like a quarterback trying to calm down the, the crowd before he um, barks his signals at the line of scrimmage, mm-hmm. grabbing the ball and just looking at his youngsters, calm down. Like he does a little bit of everything. I want to know what Hubert Davis and Harrison Ingram think is his role for this game. Is it chasing around DJ Horn and and trying not to let him get hot from three? Is it somehow being maybe guarding DJ Burns and saying we're gonna we're gonna fight your uh, you know big man with passing and, and soft touch with our versatile six seven uh, you know jack of all trades piece? I don't know. I want to see what Harrison Ingram does. And the key to the game, I guess, is just us watching and going, oh, that's what they're gonna use him for. Because there have been games where he like stands in the corner and is like a spacing three point shooter. Then there's yeah. games where he lives down low and it's like. I guess they just look at the the opponent and decide how they're going to deploy him. So there's just a few things. This game, I mean, it's going to be fun to break it down for this entire show, mm-hmm. uh, and and the history of it. Uh, Keats versus Hubert Davis, the the chess game of it, I think will be very interesting. How how does Hubert Davis deploy Harrison Ingram? But which of the nine, ten potential contributors does does Keats lean on in this one? Right, we we talked to uh, again. I talked with Keats. He was talking about the Notre Dame game, and he's like, you know, partway through the first half, I put DJ Burns and DJ Horn on on the uh, the bench and said, "You guys just don't have it right now." And he ran with other guys. Who does that in college basketball? Where it's like, hey, our two leading scores, or two of our three leading scores, uh, let, let's let's throw them to the bench for for a long period of time because they just don't have it. But we have these other guys we trust. I want to see the, the the X's and O's. There's so much to talk about this game. And on top of that, there's fan trash talk. Oh, yeah. UNC is afraid. The fans, if you go on social media, there's a certain are afraid to attend the game at PNC for the rabble-rousing that may be caused. Oh, okay. A little I, bit of rabble-rousing. I assume that's a, a small percentage of fans, but I read it and I was like, that's hilarious. <laughs>